Hello everyone and welcome back to another My Two Cents video, a Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous production. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. In today's video, we're going to talk about how I am currently making money inside of Star Citizen 3.12.1. So let's make no mistake about this. For Star Citizen to be an active game that lasts for a long time, it's got to have three things. It has to have progression of some type. So we're not going to have any kind of levels or traditional MMORPG leveling in this game. It's all skill-based. But you're still going to have ships and ships of different calibers, and weapons, and weapons of different calibers, and equipment, and equipment of different caliber. And you're going to need to accumulate all of this. You're also going to have a lot of expenses. Expenses from tax on your home, from fuel, and from maintenance, and from landing fees, and insurance, and you get the idea. You need to make money in Star Citizen. Now, Star Citizen also has a diverse set of things that you can do different professions, different missions, different ways to make money. So whether you're a miner, a cargo runner, whether you're a mercenary, whether you're somebody that's out exploring and selling the data that you collect, or maybe you're a data broker, you're going to have to do the best that you can and make as much money as you can in order to be successful in the game. So there's many people that are exploiting their talents, so not exploiting the game, but exploiting their talents, running cargo, becoming bounty hunters, or actually spending hours and hours mining and making tons of money doing it. I've tried all of that, and generally I like mining when I'm in one mood, I like cargo running when I'm in another mood, but when I want the best, the most fun, the greatest action in the game, I want to get out and do some bounty hunting, or I want to go out and just do some combat. And combat has not been tweaked to the point where it's perfect yet, but it's rather good. And it can be rather lucrative. Well, not as lucrative as other things, but you want to make money and have fun at the same time. I found something that is actually taking my time in the game right now, and that's running claim jumper missions. So a claim jumper mission is, it, it just sounds kind of weird, right? Claim jumper, what are they doing? So essentially what's happening is pirates or a rogue group of miners have moved into an area that's not their mining claim. They set up sentries that have very powerful lasers on them, and they're mining an area of very lucrative resources. You're sent in as either a criminal or you're sent in as kind of a mercenary that's fighting for good to clear that area of anyone that might be in that area trying to take advantage of that claim. Now, you're fighting NPCs, not real people here. So, essentially, you're either going to get good rep or bad rep. You're either good or you're bad doing these. The good ones, you're right around 22,500. The bad ones, around 35K. But you want to take two different missions. You want to take call to arms before you do this, because then you're going to get a certain amount of money for each kill you get, and you want to take the claim jumper mission itself. If you go back and watch the last minute of the video, you'll see me doing it on screen at this point. Now, something that you might say is, but I can't do a claim jumper mission. I don't have a ship to do it. Well, way back when claim jumper missions first came in, it was tough. Because everybody had a stock ship, and stock ships really weren't equipped to take on these sentry towers. Or maybe our skills as pilots just weren't there yet, where we weren't using dual sticks or HOTUS systems, or we didn't get a hang of how to work in 3D space. In other words, fly like a spacecraft, not like an aircraft. So... I've done these missions, and they're like clockwork. I could take my cutlass out there, not worry about anything, almost never take any damage, and blow these up. So it's got me rather 
callous to the fact that these might be harder for a new player. And the reason I'm talking about this is I've started hearing a lot of new players, and I started hearing a lot of new players that want to get ships, and I started hearing over and over again how people are spending $20, $25, $35 and purchasing credits, which are alpha UEC, not UEC, which means there is a possibility that they're buying these credits and they're not going to hold over to the regular game. So I figured, all right, let me go find different ways. So once a week, I'm going to have a different way for you to make money. I'm going to try to talk to people in the game, find ways that they're doing money. And this is just a way that I've made money. And I've made a couple hundred thousand a day just doing these claim jumper missions. I do about eight to ten a day. It's about two and a half, three hours of work if you wanted to do it. There's better ways to make money, but this one includes a lot of fun for me. So the claim jumper missions themselves usually start in the Lagrange point, and then you have to go out to a certain mining claim at one of these Lagrange points, and then search the area for the turrets and take them out. Now, in today's mission, I've decided that I was going to take out one of my starter ships. And this isn't a real starter ship, but it's a decent ship to take out. It's the Nomad, and many people have just purchased it in the last year seen a lot of them flying around, so I figured I'd take this one out. I've done this in my Aurora LN. I've done this in everything but the Pisces. The Pisces gets chewed alive because it's really not a combat ship. So what I'm doing here is taking out almost stock, an almost stock Nomad. One difference is one of the two different shields is an FR-66. I didn't change out the power plant, didn't change out the coolers, didn't change out the weapons. And basically, I, I probably lucked out doing that because I'm using three badgers. The Nomad has an extremely good gun system in that all the guns fire straight down the center line of the ship. It's kind of like uh, ships like... I would say it's more like a Vanguard, which has all the ships on the no, all the guns on the nose, or like a Freelancer, which has them on the side. So you get very, very, very tight convergence, and you don't have to worry about how far away or close in something is when you're firing on it. It makes it a very easy gun platform to use. So going in on these missions, the first thing that you got to do is fly straight towards these different. And, and you see me. I just took a hit. My shields are gone. But I'm flying straight towards these wonderful sentry robots, whatever you want to call them. And you could almost see how I'm flying right now. I'm not flying directly towards them. I have my nose on them. And I'm actually trying to fly sideways without decoupling. So I'm using a lot of side thrust, which is why you see a lot of imbalance, torque imbalance. And I'm just trying to get these in my sights, hold them in my sights, and because I have that great convergence of these weapons, I'm going to be able to take these different towers, these different satellites down pretty quickly. I really love this ship for this mission, and I'm thinking that maybe, just maybe, I need to spend some money on the Nomad and put a second FR-66 on it, a better power plant, and everything will be honky-dory. If you have a suggestion on different weapons, I know there's so many of them these days, I don't know which ones to use. A lot of people are using Gatling guns, but I really don't want to stomach the cost of continuously having to refill those ammunition belts. They are costing me a boatload on my Cutlass, but my Cutlass is also making a lot more money than something of this size. I really didn't expect the Nomad to do very well. Now, no matter when I fly out here, the front of my ship always has great shielding. The rear of it doesn't. And I think that's because the two shield units are in different places. And when I put the FR-66 in there, I think it actually took the front slot. So I'm able to take those hits from the front, but the rear, you'll see, I take a couple of hits and then my engines are on fire. So for most of this video, this is the action. I'm flying around, occasionally taking out the prospectors, which are going to harass you the whole time you're here. 
If I'm on my Cutlass, I don't even worry about them because they're not getting through the FR-76 with their M3As and their Bulldog repeaters. They're just not getting through them. But with this ship, I've got to be very careful because that rear shield is very weak. So occasionally I have to turn around and start taking out some of these prospectors. And it cost me time on the mission. On the Cutlass, I could get through these missions in about 11 minutes. In the Nomad, it's going to take me about 20. So I could probably do about three an hour if I had a little bit better setup than I have right now. And that would net me between 90 and 100K because I'm also at the same time getting credit for all of the ships that I blow up. Each one of the ships I blow up, I'm getting paid out 700, 500, 1,000 from the call to arms. And call to arms is a mission you should always have whenever you go out bounty hunting or you go out on these mercenary claims. Now be careful when you accept these mercenary missions because like I said, there's one that will affect your crime rating. The ones that will affect your crime rating you're going to get out to the site, nothing's going to be red, everything's going to be white. So although they pay more, you're going to spend some time hanging out at Korea for 40 minutes, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it might be, clearing your crime record right after you're done. Not something I suggest. So I've jumped ahead a little bit. This is maybe four or five minutes later. I'm probably most of the way done right now. So all that needs to be done is for me to take out the remaining sentry towers or the remaining satellites and then clean up all of the different prospectors that are out here. But this is where the poop starts to hit the spinning whirling device because this is where I start to take major damage. I've done this mission twice in the Nomad and both times I've come back barely able to keep this, the ship flying straight. And I think it's because I decided to run this mission on Thursday night at 5 p.m., which was just before my time to sit down and start relaxing and get ready for dinner. So I really wanted this to go quickly. And so at this point, I'd already been in the game for about 30 minutes and was starting to say, all right, I've got to go faster. So even when I'm going faster, being more reckless, being more aggressive, I was able to complete this and not die. So many times in the past I have died in this mission. In the beginning it was because early on in Star Citizen these mining fields had tons of asteroids that were just sitting there. Not spinning, not moving, but just sitting there. And it was so easy to skid out into one of them and die, you had to be very, very careful. And I wasn't a two-joystick person back then. I'm not right now, but I'm learning better how to be one by using the controls that I have, my foot pedals, my different axes on my joystick and my throttle to actually make use of the different degrees of freedom that you have available to you. And you can see that my bed has just been destroyed in the last minute or so. And now my ship is starting that wonky torque, right? I'm getting a major torque imbalance. I'm getting, I, I have a very difficult time at keeping this ship straight. And I still have a number of these to get. So I have pretty much found almost the end. There it is. You can see both of my engines are spitting flame out of them. And that is not good. So I have somebody on my tail right now. I'm going to turn towards them and try to take them out. And you can see how it's over controlling because my thrusters are now just, they're not giving the power that they were before. So it's easy for me to turn to the right because I think the left thruster is working and the right thruster isn't working as well. And here we go. Let's get in here. Let's take this guy out and then we'll skip ahead till when things really get bad. So one of the coolest things in this game is the constant fear that you're gonna die. And I talked about Death of a Spaceman, which I think has been overdone in the past, but I only bring it up because 
there's so many people that haven't been in the game before and haven't followed all of the features that are coming that sometimes it's good to reintroduce them for the new people out there. And then I rely on those of you that have been watching me forever to give great comments so the new people understand what it's all about. Yeah, I'm apprehensive about dying all the time because I know at some point there's going to be a huge detriment to it. But with medical gameplay coming in and missions being generated all the time, I think things are going to get a little bit better after they get a little bit worse at first. All right, <laughs> I did it again. The first time I did this mission, I came back with a totally red ship, and this time I'm doing it also. The total income from this mission was about 30 and a half, and then it cost me a little bit over, like 3,020, so I made about 27K from this mission. I usually make less than that with my Cutlass when I, well, it's not true. Because my Cutlass could do two of these missions and then have to rearm and repair. And the Nomad is doing one and then having to rearm and repair. So it's probably about the same amount of money for each one. Somewhere between 25 and 27 a mission. The Cutlass can do one of these every 11 to 14 minutes. It looks like until I get this Nomad fully decked out, it's only going to be able to do one every 20 minutes because it's a little bit harder to hit and really sustain damage. And it causes me to have to take on many of those ships that are attacking me before I take all the sentry satellites. So I'm just trying to show you today, it's easy to make money in the game and have fun. There's better ways to make money than this, no doubt, but this is fun. Always make sure that when you're doing this mission, you have call to arms or you're just not going to be able to make as much because every one of those harassing prospectors you blow up is going to give you a ton of extra money over time. Well, not everyone, cumulatively. They're going to give you a ton of extra money over time. So there's no real reason to sit here and make you watch the end of that mission because we've already been paid out for the initial mission, which was the claim jumper. We got the 24 or 22,500 or 25,000, whatever it was for that mission. And we got a boatload of extra cash for all of the different ships that we destroyed. So now the hard part comes in and that's getting back to base. But this gives me an opportunity to talk about 12. 3.12 has made Star Citizen beautiful. All these different Lagrange points, all these different stations are now set in this beautiful spacescape. And I can't wait until they're doing systems like Nix and Goss and Pyro and show us all the different ways that they can make space look beautiful. Stanton has gone from this ugly, bleak, black, dull, nothing going on system to a system that's truly dynamic and organic at the same time. People running all different missions, the Xeno threat has been awesome, and just the way each one of these Lagrange points, each one of these rest stops has been implemented into the game. So they have a little bit of difference and a lot of difference as you go from the R Corp Lagrange points to the Hurston to, to I want to leave out Crusader because I don't know what they're doing when Crusader is finally introduced in one of the next two patches, but I am just floored by the beauty of this. So I want to do these videos about how to make money in the game, and I want your input on these. There'll be one a week that I highlight a different mission, a different mission track, a different event, something where you can go and you can find different ways to make money. I say diversify your experiences in Star Citizen. When you do just one thing, it might get boring, but there's so much to do, so much to see, even just with the one system that we have now. And then close your eyes and think about two years from now, because I'm guaranteeing you this because I do know things, that once we have Pyro, and we have Nyx. 
there's going to be other systems that come online pretty quickly. And we are going to have different places to go. We're going to be able to spread our wings and go to areas of the Star Citizen universe that we have never even dreamed of because those dreams have been quashed by being stuck in Stanton for so long. And I can't wait until that happens. And then we're going to have long distance missions that might be paying more. You're going to have incursions coming from not just pirates, but potentially Vanduul. As we get closer and closer to Vanduul space, Stanton's not that far away. It's just a couple of jumps away from Vanduul space. So once they open up Pyro, it's not too far to get to Orion and Tiber. And those things might be coming with Squadron 42, but once Squadron 42 comes out, 2022, November, we should be having that same look and feel, that same, that same amazing look into where Star Citizen will be going over the next three to four years. All right, my ship is broken. This is more than a paint job. I am not happy about it. But I think I've talked your ears off today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for commenting on my videos. Thank you for the warm welcome back. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button below. If you have done clicking the thumbs down button, please give me why so I can make the channel better. And if you do subscribe, be sure to click that bell-shaped icon so you get notified of all my future videos. I do have a patron. Look in the description below. I do have referral codes. Look in the description below. And with that said, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon.